In this video, we're going to take a look at a new feature that provides a shortcut for applying a material to a surface with planar projection and the surface tool. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use some new decals that we ship with Substance Painter. These are five samples from the new decals category from Substance Source. So what we're going to take a look at is this large rust leaks, and let's apply it here to this asset. So this is a material, and what I'm going to do is left click and just drag and drop that from my shelf. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, which now lets me apply this material with planar projection and the surface tool enabled. So when I let go of my mouse, you can see that the leaks material will now be applied. And here you can see that the surface tool is active. Now I can use my transform manipulator tools to position this material. So I'll hit E on the keyboard and this manipulator is quite large so we can reduce the size and I'm going to rotate this material and again, hit W to go to my move tool. Like I said, I'm just going to position this material. Now I can also come over here to my material settings and you can see that this is uh, just a substance material. So we have lots of parameters we can work with. So for example, if the leaks is too long, I can simply drag this slider here to make an adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and keep this at one. I also have, you know, several of these parameters that I can use to uh, vary up how these leaks are going to be rendered on my surface. So here with the color, I do want to change this. It's a bit too uh, bright for me. So I'm just going to lower this to a darker value. And this is the result that we're now getting. So now I'm going to go back here to my manipulator. And like I said, again, I'm just going to uh, position these leaks right where I want them to be. Now, as I said, if we take a look at the layer using that alt drag shortcut automatically sets the projection to planar. And I do want to stress that you could actually do this with any material within Substance Painter. It just happens to be very useful when you're using decal materials. So with that, you can see we have this volume of influence for our planar projection, and we can make changes to this as well. So for example, if we come over and take a look at the culling here for my angle, again, if I set this all the way to 135, we can see here that the texture is now being planar projected here through the volume. And again, we can start to change this by just moving the actual volume itself. But in this case, I do want to make sure that I have the culling active. So I'm just going to lower this down to below 90 degrees. All right, so we have the leaks in place, but I do need to mask this. So over here on my layer stack, I'm just going to right click and choose to add a white mask. This is uh, acting like a holdout mask. Then here, if I wanted, I could add a paint effect. Of course, I could just paint this mask. But another option, which uh, actually works a little bit faster, is to come over here to the polygon fill tool. I'm going to set this to the mesh option and then set the color to black and then simply click here on this mesh part to create the mask. Now I can jump back to my brush and here we can see that we have the leaks now applied specifically to this area. Now I do see a small little problem here in the corner. No worries there. We'll just go back to the layer itself and here I'm going to just move this up using just the transform manipulator. Okay, so now we have that in place. Of course, we can always go back and change any of the substance parameters if we need to. All right, so let's take a look at another example. So I'm gonna come over here to where we have this shelf and I'm gonna apply this spray paint tag. So again, using the same technique, left click and drag, hold down the Alt key, and here we can apply this material as a planar projection with the surface tool enabled by default. With the surface tool enabled, I can actually drag this around and apply this or project this through my scene using this volume of influence. So here I'm just going to rotate this uh, into place. Maybe we'll just scale this down a little bit, get something like that. Now, another thing I just want to point out, if we zoom in really close, since we are using this planar projection, you can see that this volume of influence is also encompassing these bowls. And this is adding some of the paint here, which I don't want from the material. So here I'll just simply grab the move tool and I'm just going to move the volume of influence away from these bowls. And that takes care of that projection issue. All right, so now I have my tag here in place. One thing I think I might do uh, is just go ahead and create a mask for this as well. So again, I'm going to use the white mask to hold out what I have created thus far. And then here I'm going to add a fill. And this time I'm going to come over to my mini shelf. Let's do a quick search here through grunge. And I'm just going to apply a grunge map. 
And with that grunge map, I'm going to just increase my contrast and then maybe play around just a little bit here with the balance. So this just gives us a little bit more of a worn look. Now, let's also jump back over here to the material and let's take a look at some of the material settings for this. So this has a lot of material properties. One of the things that I definitely wanna change is maybe some of the leaks length here. So let's lengthen that value. So I can do that by just dragging the slider here, I'm also going to increase the leaks density. And so now we're starting to get some of these paint drips, which is kind of more in line of what I was wanting to do. Of course, maybe if the grunge is a little too intense, we can always jump back over uh, to that setting here and adjust the balance. So here I have the substance launcher and I'm previewing substance source to take a look at the full category of the decals that we've added. So there's a lot of options here. And I do like this bullet option. So I'd like to send this over to Substance Painter. So what I can do is just come over and click the Substance Painter option, and that's gonna send that. It's gonna download this source material, and then it's gonna send it right over to my Substance Painter shelf. So here I will minimize the launcher, and you can see when I jump back over to Painter, we now have that decal material ready for us to use. So again, let's go ahead and apply this. What we're gonna do is just simply left click and drag. I'm gonna hold down my Alt key, and then I'm just going to uh, apply the material in this general location. Now I'm just going to scale this down just a bit. And let's also take a look at some of the properties that we have. We can change the size as well as some of the masking here. So you can see my mask input selection is based on procedural. So I'm just going to make a few adjustments here to the mask input size X and Y. And then again, I'm just gonna grab my manipulator and reposition the decals here. And so here you can see that I've quickly downloaded another decal from Substance Source, and I'm going to apply this one as well. So here you can see that using drag and drop with planar projection allows me to quickly texture my scene, and it works very well for materials, especially for decal materials. So when applying materials, as I've shown here in this video, we need to be aware of specific blending modes. So if we take a look at these large bullet rusty impact material, let's come over to the layer stack and let's take a look at the height channel. You'll notice that the height blending mode is set to normal instead of linear dodge. So by default, the height channel is always set to linear dodge, meaning that it's going to try to combine the height information from the layer below it. But oftentimes when you're trying to apply a material as we've done here, you'll wanna be able to make sure that that height or normal information is overriding the layers below it. And you can see that in this particular material, the height channel is set to normal mode. So to help you when creating your own materials, in Substance Designer, we've created some new options for user data so that you can let Painter know exactly how you want the height and normal channels to blend. So here I'm in Substance Designer and I'm taking a look at the source file for that bullet rusty impact that we had just applied in Substance Painter. If we take a look at the height output, you can see here that we have this blending mode option set here for the user data. Now I urge you to take a look at the Substance Painter documentation because user data is actually quite important and there's a lot of information here you can tag into the user data to let Substance Painter know more about the types of materials that you've authored and that you're trying to use in Substance Painter. And like I said, to help with this new feature, we've added this option for blending mode. So you'll notice here for the height channel in the user data, we have it set to blending mode equals normal. So now in Substance Painter, when I drag and drop this material in, the blending mode can be set based on the user data and it can overwrite that default state of being linear dodge. Same thing with the normal, you can actually set the blending mode to be normal instead of normal combine. This gives you a lot of flexibility for the custom materials you may be creating to work with this new feature in Substance Painter.